last is how we some news from the last week. Who's got something interesting to share? Let's start. Who's going first? Mackie. Really talking to these people. I did put my bracelets on Vinton and I sold about eight. Mackie sold eight of her bracelets on Vinton. That's fantastic. Well done. Also, Mackie, thank you so much for sending me the photos. Right, who else has got news? Annie. This weekend I did a bracelet store, but it was really We're going. Oh, hang on a second, go ahead. <laughs> it was really cold, so there were, the, and we did it in front of a pub, so there weren't, like, everything was just inside, really. What? But, yeah, because in the pub, the pub was really busy, but there was, but we did, we made, a, I think, like... 19 pounds. 19 pounds. But to be honest, you didn't stay out for very long, because it was so cold. Who else? Yeah. Leela, did you do your stall this weekend? <laughs> No, you didn't, did you? Next week. You're doing it next no. week, Mila. Where did you do it? Is that Mila? Say that again. Where did you do your bracelet business? In the front of the Chamberlain, we're trying to do it, but it's too cold. So we're going next Saturday, next Saturday morning. morning. By the time we got there, it was dark. It wasn't, we didn't, yeah. it wasn't our best. But that's the thing with these things. You have to keep on trying. Um, Who else? Mila, go ahead. Mila, go ahead. Um, yeah. Um, so last Sunday, I had a Christmas concert with the place I do singing. Oh, yeah. And hallelujah. Oh, she's saying hallelujah. What, as a solo, Mila? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That is amazing. Well done. That's a very brave thing to do. Who else has got their hand up? Faith. I had my first Christmas fair on Saturday. You did a Christmas fair as well? Yeah. And how did it go? Pretty good. I sent you some videos of it on TikTok. Okay, I'll have to check. I haven't seen those. Thank you so much. That's great. Who else has got so Everyone's got their hands up. Addy, what are you going to say? Um, well, I need to say that I had my stagecoach show with Mila. Yeah, yeah, you guys did your stagecoach show, <laughs> which was very good. Noah, what's your news? I sold a pair of these earrings for £2. Well done, Noah. That's fantastic. What is that on there? It, 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 is it I a crown? Oh, what is it? I don't know. It looks lovely. Who did you sell them to? It's like a woman who wanted them for her daughter. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. James, you've got your hand up. This is not me, but my friend who moved to California. He yes. did this, he made Lego ports. Yes. He made these Lego ports which are complicated. Did he sell them? Yeah, he sold them for like ten pounds each and they had a logo on the top and you could carve your name into them and he had a person on the top and he's got ten thousand pounds selling them. James, that sounds amazing. Is this a kid? Yeah, he's my friend who moved to California. We need to get him on this programme, don't we? Someone like that. It's amazing. And last hand up, Nyla May. Nyla, say that again. Nyla, is your hand up? Hey. I did this for no, I made 35 pounds. You made 35 pounds? Well done. Where was that? At your school? I did it outside my house. Well done, guys. I literally can't believe how well you're all doing. I am so impressed the way you've just taken oh, this wow. and are getting on with it. That is fantastic news. Let's do today's lesson. So, guys, we have actually, let's start today's lesson and then I'll tell you what's happening for the rest of this term. For those of you who are new, we teach entrepreneurship, business, money and mindset to kids every day at 4.30. We have two lessons left until the end of term. In terms of our news we just had our bracelet making competition our second competition which closed and i think three or four of you were winners which was super exciting so well done to the winners now so who has seen can you remind me which of you are fans of drunk elephant again who likes that brand drunk elephant here or stella okay guess who i met last week who can guess uh no who do you think this is Tiffany Masterson. 
Yeah. Now, remember how on Biz Kids we say that every single business starts with a single person who has a good idea. <laughs> Tiffany, this lady here, was the single person who had the good idea for Drunk Elephant. Now, I saw her at an event, and because of you guys, I went running up to her and said, please record a message. And I told her all about you guys and what you're doing. And if you go on our TikTok, you'll see that she has sent you a very special message about hard work, about how she was one day, once upon a time, just where you guys are now, thinking about creating a business and how she owns Drunk Elephant. We have today's lesson, then we have next week's lesson, which is our last lesson of the term. And that lesson is going to be all about confidence. And we're doing that with a special guest from Stagecoach. Now, are any of you pupils at Stagecoach Theatre School, have any of you been to Stagecoach classes or holiday camps? Is it Amory? No, it's not Anne-Marie. <laughs> it's a guy called Robert. Now, stage coach teaches singing, dancing, and acting to children. And some of us, I know that Mila goes to stage coach, Annie goes to stage coach, Stella goes to stage coach, and they are coming next week to teach us about confidence and do some confidence boosting exercises. So, what have we been doing over the past few weeks before we get on with today's lesson? So, we've been learning about the traits and mindsets of great entrepreneurs and success. We've been learning about being persistent managing time and managing our minds we've also learned about bracelet selling businesses i can't believe how many of you guys are out there doing that so well we've learned about ebay businesses and we've learned about generation alpha which is your generation <coughs> of kids today we're going to be learning some lessons from the past now you're going to need a pen and pencil to write with and that's all you're going to need just something to make some notes on okay and remember in biz kids, there's no such thing as a silly question and put your hand up if you want to speak and unmute yourself just so that I can let everyone have a turn in talking. But who remembers, who was here when we learned about the different generations and we learned about a group of people called the silent generation? Who remembers that? And we made the, the silent generation who lived about 100 years ago, some of them are still alive today, lived a very different life from us. And I think when we learned about that generation before, we thought they were very different to us, didn't we? We thought they were really different types of people. Noah, what can you remember about the silent generation? I don't remember the silent generation. Is that I said they were silent. You That's said they were silent, yeah. Do you remember they lived around the time of the First and Second World War? They didn't even yeah. always go to school. They had no computers and no technology. It was very different. However, just because the times were different doesn't mean that the people were different and we can't learn great things from them. So today, we're going to be talking about three of the most famous and successful books about mindset and success that are all written around a hundred years ago and these are think and grow rich how to win friends and influence people and man's search for meaning so these are books that are quite famous amongst grown-ups has anyone ever heard of any of these books at all no no have you which one have you heard of i've had a, i've heard of man's search for meaning and my dad was going to buy the book mm. But then he didn't bring his wallet or his phone, so he didn't. Did he not bring his debit card, though, Noah? That's the thing. No. <laughs> OK, that's great that you've heard of these, because these are books that grown-ups read when they're trying to work out how to improve their mindset and how to improve the way they think. And we're going to take three lessons from these books and see if you can apply them to your lives. Because even though these books were written 100 years ago, which is... A very long time they're still very relevant today and essentially these books are about your mindset and finances your relationships and friendships and focusing on what matters in life so in today's lesson i'm going to tell you the three most important lessons from each book and then we're going to do a little exercise for each book as well who's got the hand up mila g mila have you got your hand up oh it's still up okay Jane. Sorry, I forgot to take it down. James, is your hand up? No, James, okay, take your hand down, James, so, I, so that I can see that it's not up. Okay, so let's start with book number one, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. So this is a book written in 1937, nearly 100 years ago, 
that explores the principles of success and wealth building. So the principles of making money. And it talks about the power of positive thinking, goal setting and taking action to turn dreams into realities. So the first, now, if you can think of a time that you've experienced this, then put your hand up and share your story. So lesson one is the power of thought and that what you achieve starts with what you think. Your mindset shapes your reality. Who's experienced that they've been able to do something because they've thought positively? Noah, what's your experience? So I was making something for my friend and then I needed to do this really hard. I know no really what it's called. It's like a really hard shape, but it can yeah. only be called that shape if you do it exactly right. Yeah. But you had to do it exactly straight line. Um, and so I got a ruler and tried yeah. doing it. And then I failed. And then and I, I thought I could never do it. And then I thought that my dog would be proud if I did it. And so I did it. Oh, no, that's so sweet. So you changed your thoughts and you got to do what you wanted to do, which is absolutely brilliant. Great story. Mila G, have you got your hand up? Were you showing us something? So I actually have two. Go on then. Um, one of them, the most important one, is the on the concert that I was doing for Hallelujah. Usually I'm always very scared and I'm always very nervous, but this time... I was really happy and really excited to do it. And I had a lot of positive energy in my head, which changed my mood around. That's brilliant, Mila. That worked then, yeah? yeah. That is fantastic. And you did a great performance. Thank you. And what's your second story, uh, Mila? The second one is I started doing a lot of going and at first I didn't think I was going to do well like I thought it was going to look absolutely terrible and that I would poke a bunch of holes in my fingers but then I actually created this on the weekend. Wow Mila you are getting so talented with all your creations that's amazing. Thank you. So you changed your thoughts about it as well did you? Yes. Great work okay Stella. Mine's a bit like Mila's at the start, so it, it doesn't really anything specific, specifically, but like doing like a dance competition or something, yeah. and then like being a bit nervous, but not really more thinking about what's going to go well than what's going to go wrong, and then it just going really well and winning, or like just people enjoying it and stuff. Brilliant, Stella. It's so true. This is, even though this book was written 100 years ago, this is one of the most truest things, is that the success starts with how you think. So our next, the next lesson from this book, Think and Grow Rich, is about the importance of setting goals. So setting yourself a challenge and try to achieve it. Who's got an example of that, where they've set themselves a challenge, and because they set themselves a the challenge, it then came true? Let's see, Toby. I had a goal to sell 50 bundles from the time of September to the 1st of December. Um, yeah. And I kept pushing the bundle sales on TikTok and Instagram, and I completed my goal. You've done 50 bundles, Toby? Yeah. That is absolutely brilliant. Well done, Toby. That's fantastic. Faith, what's your example of this? So at school, I practice my spell, and it's got easily tricky word like section four and five and stuff and I try and get myself to do one of them every day. And, do, and does that work? Yeah. So you set yourself the goal to do your spellings every day and then it works. I love the way there's so many examples here. We'll do one more, Amelia, and then we'll go to our next question. Amelia Riley? I have two examples. Okay, so go on. At school, I'm at my school, we have to join our handwriting. Yeah. And it I find it really tricky. Every night I come home and try and practice to join it. Great. And does that work? Yeah. Brilliant. And what's your second story? I've always wanted to start my own business. And then one day I tried, but then my brace, when I kept tying them, my bracelets just kept snap snapping. But then my sister went to me and went, it's okay, just try again. And then it worked. 
That's another great story. Well done, guys. So many great stories. And our third lesson from the book, Think and Grow Rich, is persistence. Actually, Amelia, your story you just told them was one of persistence as well, wasn't it? Keeping trying again, and then it worked. And we've learned a lot about persistence. Who's got a story of a time when they kept trying and then it all works out? Right, Mila S., let's see if we can hear you today. Oh, Mila, your computer's doing that thing where we can't hear you. Write it down and hold it up. Who else has got a story of persistence? Noah. My story of persistence is when um, when I, it's like, it's, it's a bit like the same that I did. Um, so when I'm when I, um, trying to um, draw my friend. Yeah. She was like, she carried on saying, no, come on, you can do this. But it was really hard because she had loads of bits hanging down from her face. Like, yeah. A bit like that. And so it was really hard to fit on the body I drew. And then I carried on trying and then yeah. ended up, it ended up really bad. And then she told me a few things that could help me. And then it didn't work again. And then I carried on trying for about an hour until I finally did it. Well done. And it's really hard to keep trying for an hour when things aren't working out like that. So that is a very good example of persistence. Trayden, have you got an example of persistence? I used to struggle with uh, tying off balloon band bracelets. Yeah. So I kept struggling and struggling. But after a couple of times, I eventually got it. Great. You've all got these examples. Caden, you just won our competition as well, didn't you? Yeah. Well done. Were you excited? Yeah, I was really excited when I seen it because I just joined the TikTok live, like just a couple of seconds, just a couple of seconds before um, my name was called. So I was lucky to be there. Oh, that's so lucky! I couldn't believe how many of you were on the TikTok live when we were calling the competition winners. It was so exciting to see you there. Okay, so the three lessons from thinking grow rich. Now, our oh, hang on, let me just move this screen on. Why is it frozen? Okay, so our challenge for you in this book. The author talks about a secret to success. Now, bearing in mind, and lots of people discuss, he always says the secret for everything is hidden within this book. Bearing in mind, the book is called Think and Grow Rich. What do you guys think the secret might be? Who can think what the secret might be? Bearing in mind, this is the book, Think and Grow Rich. And it's a book, you've got to read the whole thing to discover the secret. Oh, Mila's holding her thing up. What's no, wait. No, this isn't it. Okay, who wants to have a guess what the secret is? Bethany, another competition winner. Uh, maybe it's that alibi years you'll get. Well, it's what Bethany. If you do what? If it's hard and do good. Uh, yeah, try hard and do good. That's part of the secret. Who else can think what the secret might be? Caden, <laughs> what do you think? Caden, just unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, Cade, we'll come back to you, Faith. What do you think it might be? Um, to think. Yes, that's that. exactly it. That is it, Faith. Have you heard that before or did you just guess it? I just guessed it. That is it. So there's a book called Think and Grow Rich and there's a great secret hidden within the book and the secret is about how you think is so important. Okay, so the secret is hidden in the title and it is to think. Think positively. Noah, what do you want to say? I have something to add on. What's that? Go on. It's like, it's like when you start a business, you need to start like with a groundbreaking idea and then like build on it. That's but exactly right. I think this book is a bit like I've not read it, but it's like you need to think deeper because there's always going to be an answer to everything. That's great, Noah. I love that. And you're right. Everything starts with a thought, doesn't it? We've talked about that, how everything starts with a single person, a good idea, and a lot of what you succeed, what you succeed in comes down to how you think. Book number two, how to win friends and influence people. Put your hand up if you think you're very good at making friends and influencing people. Some of you think, put your hand up if you'd like to be better at making friends. Oh, so some of you want to be better at making friends. Some of you think some of you are good at making friends. So 
Back in 1936, again, 100 years ago, a whole book was written about how to win friends and influence people. This is one of the most successful books ever. It's a very famous book. That's how many people want help making friends and influencing others. And it sold 15 million copies all over the world. So lesson number one, how to make friends, is express an empathy and interest in others. The most important thing in this book is it's all about asking other people questions. Who thinks they're really good at asking other people questions when you meet someone new? Stella, tell us about your experience. What sort of questions do you mm -hmm. ask? Just, just ones that come to mind at the time. Like maybe if we've been like somewhere, I ask mm -hmm. about like what, how they found it and stuff and just questions about them and about what they like doing. Brilliant. That's really good, Stella. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? But I'm saying that I'm not very good at like when I ask mm. questions because I, I don't know. I just ask them a random question, not thinking of it, or like maybe they'll be offended by that question. I yeah, it's know. not easy. You know what? It's not easy, guys, just to ask people lots of questions. Caden, have you got your hand up? So I would usually ask like the small questions like do sometimes and what's their favourite colours and what their favourite animal is. Those are great questions to ask. Basically, one of the lessons in this book is that people love to talk about themselves. If you meet somebody and you want to make friends with them, be interested and ask them questions. So Caden's saying I'll they've just asked. Them. It's just making conversation. <laughs> what's your name? What's your favourite colour of your kids? Noah. Can you think of a time you've asked lots of questions? What did you ask? Well, I want to talk about my friend that I knew since the, literally the day I was born. Yeah. Um, she's only four days older than me and knows literally everything about me, even my deepest, darkest secrets, which no yeah. that's I'm going to share in here. Um, <laughs> but, but like when I first met her, which was like when I was so young, like when I was zero, I think. Yeah. Um, I couldn't speak, so I didn't say anything, and we would just sit down with our mums and do that. But then when I went to nursery with her, so when I was, like, three, four, yeah, I could yeah. actually talk to her. And so when I talked to her, I didn't – I wasn't the best at that time by making friends because I always did really huh? big questions, not start with the small ones. I would always <laughs> be like, what would you like to be in the future – and we were only in nursery and she was like she was better at making the conversation so she started with what's your name and then I just shouted out what do you want to be in the future and then from then on we've been friends but like how would I how I greet a friend now would be I would run away until they talk to me Oh, That's Noah, Noah, when you've had such brilliant success at age four, <laughs> asking people what they want to do for their future, you can't be now running away. So you need to... Oh, I would I sometimes go. stay and then just wait for them to say hi first. I'm I know, and you know what, they probably feel the same way. Like, lots of people find it hard to start a conversation. So it's a great thing for you to remember yes. when you're out and about that for a hundred years, people have been reading this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And one of the key things it talks about is asking other people questions. Also, I do a French lesson with this girl. And when I first yeah. met her, which was two weeks ago, I, I was waiting for her to say hi. And when she said hi, I felt more comfortable because like she was starting the conversation. I know, and that's normal. But next time you can start the conversation because she probably feels exactly the same way as you do. One more comment, Neela G. Okay, so I've, I've had to make a lot of friends because in the class that I had for year five and year six, all of my friends were split up from me and in the other classes and I had no friends. So I had to make a lot of friends and now I have a bunch of friends in my class. And also about the, and on the first thing they said about, what was it, advice for other people? Yeah. Lots of my mm. friends have... When they're sad, I always give them advice and I try to make them happy. That's great work, Mila. But Mila, you're, that's really right. You had everyone change class and that was particularly difficult for you. And well done, because you had to go through that making friends. Hopefully you did it by asking people lots of questions, did you? I actually 
what I just do is I ask, do you want to be my friend? <laughs> well, that's still a question, isn't it? <laughs> Worked. Got and it's all about asking the question okay the next lesson from this book is oh it's a similar thing that people like talking them about themselves and their interests so let's think of some questions you could ask somebody when you meet them especially now that you're all more grown up nobody's four or five what sort of questions if you meet somebody who can think of a good question they can ask them amelia what do you think you can ask if you meet someone if you're out and about say you're selling bracelets or you're selling anything amelia what do you think um i think you could ask them um what they want to be when they're older what's their passion that's a brilliant question to ask. Now, what if you're meeting an adult? Suppose, imagine you're running a bracelet stall or a sweet stall and an adult comes up to that you and you want to make friends with them because you want to, you're an interested person. Yeah. Right, everyone's got their hands up. Annie, what can you say to an adult? Um, I would first definitely start with pine, not just start starting with random questions because yeah. it would feel like they're trying to find something else about you and they're like, what's your name yeah what's your favorite hobby okay so we start with so hi i start with a friendly hi and then i probably ask like how are you how are you would you like to buy some bracelets yeah remember um, they like to talk about themselves and their interests oh um, and we don't know what their interests are no, we're just trying to build so a rapport weird they're, adults. they're adults yeah but this is this is how you would show you were a confident child let's see what okay bethany what would you say to an adult I would say hi, how is your day? Hi, how's your day? Great question to ask. Stella, what would you say? First of all, I'd like to start with the simples, like hi, how are you? But then I would like, probably if I'm selling like bracelets or something, I'd be like, oh, what's your favourite colour? What ones are you interested in? And then we probably get into more of a conversation. Great. What's your favourite colour is a great way of asking about something they're interested in. They might then say, I love green and I've got this wonderful green jumper. And then you can say, oh, I have a green jumper as well. So great and question. And I've got some green bracelets. Faith, what would you say? So I would like, so at the weekend, I just let people browse about before they were packing a bracelet and then... Yeah. There was a bracelet stall across from me, so we paid our prices down in case they were a bit cheaper than us, and we had a bit of competition, so I just we paid the prices down, and then a wee boy just kept picking up bracelets, and then they finally picked one, and then his mum was like, £2.50, yeah, sure, I'll just buy, buy that, so I just let them browse about, and then I just say, hi, would you like to buy that, or would you like a bag with it? Great. And another thing you could say, Faith, if you've got people browsing about your store like that, is you can say, where have you travelled from today? Do you live locally? Those sorts of questions will help them to talk about themselves. Mila S, let's see if, you're gonna, if your audio will work or have you got it written down? Oh, Mila, the audio is not working. The audio is not working again. She keeps writing things down for us. She's writing. OK, we'll ask comment from Caden. I would just maybe ask them what they enjoy doing, like if they want like anything new, like a new cut like a bracelet. Yeah, great idea. So we've got some brilliant questions there that you can ask to adults. How's their day? Where have they travelled from? What's their favourite colour? And what are they into? Now, the next lesson from this book is about how to handle arguments because everybody gets in different, difficult conversations at different points in time. And the number one thing is, even if you don't agree, respect their opinion. Who knows what that means to respect somebody else's opinion, even if you don't agree with it? Stella, you got your hand up? What yeah, if you're in a really big argument with someone and they're like saying, oh, I think this and stuff, don't just say I don't so it doesn't matter. You have to say, oh, okay, I agree with that, but I think this and I, I disagree, I think this but you don't just straight away say that I don't agree and stuff like that. Yeah, great answer. Who else? Toby. You have to agree to disagree. Toby, that's absolutely spot on. What do you mean by that? So you have to realise that you're different people and you're going to have different opinions and you both have to live with that. 
That's exactly right. So one thing you one thing it's not great to say when you're in a difficult situation, if you want to win lots of friends and influence people is to say to somebody, you're wrong and I'm right. Even though we all feel that way. Who's ever felt that way that they're definitely right and the other person's wrong? I'm gonna put my hand up because I feel that way. But one thing you shouldn't do, according to this book from 100 years ago, is say you're wrong and I'm right. And instead you do what Stella and Toby have said, where you basically hear their point and you agree. You say, OK, I accept your point. I have a different view and here it is. Annie. It's not It's not about this, but are all these books written by the same author? No, they're all written by different authors. This one's written by a guy called Dale Carnegie. The other one's written by a guy called Napoleon Hill. Let's see what our exercise is. I know Napoleon Hill's a very good. Let's see what our exercise is on this is book. Is this one of the books? how to win our exercise from how to win friends and influence people is when you're next talking to somebody think about what thoughtful questions you can ask them and how you can ask those questions to help them open up so we've already discussed that ask them where they've traveled from what about with your friends what questions could you ask your friends noah to start maybe a conversation you could say hi how are you and you could say how's your day been and you can ask how their parents have been and if they have a pet how their pet's been and if they've <laughs> gone somewhere how that's been and if they've gone to a shop how that's been i think noah's just come up with a new formula which is the how's it been formula which is a great one so whatever they say they've been doing you say how did that go how did how, what happened there brilliant formula Okay, our third book is Man's Search for Meaning, which is a book that no one knows. And it was written in 1946, another book from a long time ago. And it details the, the experience of the author, Viktor Frankl, being held as a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp in the World War II. Now, how do you think you guys would feel if you were held as a prisoner in a concentration camp? What do you think you'd think about it? How do you think you'd feel? Faith, how do you think you'd feel? I would feel a bit nervous and scared because yep. like, your family was still out out there. You don't know what could happen to them, but and anything worse could happen to you. Exactly, you'd feel nervous and scared. How else, Annie? How would you feel? It's another question about the book. <laughs> but are these like true? They're not like true stories, but no, they're not. This is a true story. Man's Search for Meaning is a true story by yeah, this guy. Yeah, but is it like someone who's been through that situation? Yeah, he's written about his own experience in 1946. Oh, their own experience. His own experience, yeah, yes. going through this. Wait, but not just that book. But all all the, the others are like books that they've written as experts, whereas this book is this man's own experience. Oh. Okay, Bethany, how do you think you would feel if you were facing this situation? I feel very weird and overwhelmed. Exactly. We'd only be experiencing. Stella, how do you think you'd feel? I'd just I feel really horrible when I'd want to just go back to my own house and see all the people who I've missed and it just wouldn't be nice at all. It would be awful, exactly. Mila G, how do you think you'd feel? I would be very worried about my family and I would also be very angry because I would probably think I've done nothing to deserve this. Why should I be here? And why should my family be in all this trouble when they've also done nothing wrong? Exactly. So what you guys have described, that in this situation, you'd feel frightened, angry, upset, all sorts of emotions. Do you think you would have the power in your mind to take those feelings and turn them into positive feelings or not? No. No. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. We've got lots of people shaking. No, that's what this man did. And that's why this book became so famous. So the first thing he learned was that the only thing he could control was his mind. So he had to find meaning in the challenge. So who can think of a time they've had a difficult situation and have come out of it afterwards and thought that was actually good. I learned a lot. I can think of some benefits of that difficult situation. Who's got an experience of that? Noah. Mine's not exactly it's good. It's a bit like okay. It's okay. because the war that's happening in Israel, I'm Israeli, so I'm really upset mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Because all my family's there. Yeah. Um, and and my cousin one of my cousins have to fight in the war. And 
I go, I like for a whole three weeks, I was crying. Yeah. And, and then my dad told me it's all going to be okay because she's safe for now. And so then I came over it and thought about the good side that at least she's not got a good chance of being kidnapped by them or anything. Being from Israel, you're experiencing circumstances that some of us were, uh, don't experience and can't imagine. But that's a very good illustration of taking something that you're really worried about and then turning your mind and making it more positive. And your cousin's safe, is she? Good, great. Mila, what can you think of? Mila G. I mean, something that was hard and then it became better. Uh, something that was hard was I had a pretty hard time with friendships, but then, but then I actually found that it was a good use for life. So I am prepared of what happened next. Mila, that's a brilliant example. You've actually realised that through going through the challenge. You're now more confident, aren't you? And you know how to better make, you know how to make friends and you've got a whole new group of friends. Yeah. That's a brilliant example. That's a perfect example. Faith. So I struggle with my feeling and I keep trying and trying to get 10 out of 10, but I, I kept getting quite low scores and my teacher wouldn't move me down until my mum emailed emailed them and then he finally moved me down now I find it a lot easier. Do you think you do you feel you grew as a person Faith from having from like making those changes even though it wasn't easy? Yeah. Great brilliant example and last one Toby. Something that was hard was my fair not yesterday the week before yeah um, because in the first two hours, I only had five cells. And then after that, people started turning up. And then that's where I made all my money. And you found that hard waiting for them to turn up? Yeah, because I had to pay all the staff that I had with me for a time that they were not doing anything. Toby, it's such a business. Toby, that's really good. That's a classic business person's journey where you have to keep going and find positive, even though it wasn't easy in those first two hours. Okay, so our second lesson from this book is about choice and attitude. And again, this is talking about difficult situations. They're not always what we want to happen, but sometimes the only thing we can do is can control how we respond. Now, has anyone experienced, Toby's just given it. Toby, how did you control how you responded then? Because you were obviously feeling frustrated. We weren't really frustrated, we were all just nervous. Oh, so you're nervous. So how did you control how you responded? Uh, I took all that, um, the guys all with me out because uh, near uh, where we were, there was like a pizza truck down the road. Yeah. So I took all the people that were working for me down there and we got uh, a couple of pizzas to share. And did that cheer everyone up? Yeah. Brilliant. That's a great thing to do. So you took massive action there. Uh, Faith. So I go to my classic and something be quite annoying and she gets upset easily and everyone and my friend group tries to annoy her, even though I'm not, not really good friends with her. I still try and help her be like calm and help her. And when she gets really upset, I take her to the rainbow room in my school sometimes. So Faith, that's another brilliant example. So you're saying even though this person isn't like your best friend, you've made a choice to be kind and help her out regardless. Great example, Annie. This isn't an example, but one thing that you can do, you can try to distract yourself from the situation, like Toby said, to go get pizza. Yeah, that's that's a choice. You're making a choice yeah. to get yourself out of that situation, aren't you? So you're making a choice to change where you are and change your attitude by doing mm. something differently. Okay, and our third lesson from this book is that if you have a purpose in life, i.e. if you have a big goal, then even in hard situations, you can find joy and happiness. Now, is that something you guys can understand? I'm never sure whether it's too grown up, but what it's <laughs> saying is, actually, I'm going to throw it to you guys and see what you make of that. Who wants to go first? Noah. It basically means don't let anything bring you down because you can always on the other side and see that there's like nothing stopping you from having a good thing about it. Exactly, that's what it means a little bit. Toby, you got your hand up. 
you can always push further than you think you can yeah and toby you've really experienced that with your even the selling of 50 bundles haven't you Mila G. i used to keep them going no matter what yeah and, and it's all about having a goal that's bigger than the goal in the moment for instance if we use Toby as an example, and he goes to his stall and it's a little bit quiet and he's a bit worried because he's got his staff there and the day's not going as planned, but then he takes them for a pizza and the day actually goes really well because Toby made 400 pounds. But Toby's goal is bigger than that one event, which means that one event, that one bad experience isn't everything. Okay, guys, so Toby set a goal to build himself a big sweet business and he has a purpose bigger than that one event. And also, yeah. um, for the one before, the one before the one that we just did. Yeah, let's go back. Choice and attitude. Yeah, I have an example of one go of on. that. When um, I was at my school, uh, I didn't get picked to, to go in the football tournament because I wasn't in for two days, which made my um, attendance drop to 85 and the attendance was meant to be on 95. So yeah. I ever seen that, and now my attendance is on 92%. Great, that's brilliant. Okay, so our little exercise oh, is to think about purpose and thinking about what you, thinking about the question that Noah asked to the other four-year-olds, what do you want to do with your lives? Thinking about what you want to do with your lives in general, what would you say you could have as one of your purposes? So that might be, I want to do really well at school, or I want to, it might be, I want to sell 50 bracelets, or it might be, I want to get really fit and be in my sports team. So have a think, just have a quick think about what you want, you, what you feel passionately about and what you'd like to have as your big per, bigger purpose. Noah. Um, I just have something to say. Can I say an example about the slideshow number two on man's search for meaning? Yes, let's go back to so, number two. Number two, choice and attitude. Someone in my class used to bully me. Like, every day she would come up with something mean, not true about me. Yeah. Um, and my friends were really good backup, but then I told them they shouldn't because because it would just it's just make because it's just encouraging her to do it more if we get upset. What I did was when I said something and then my friend didn't understand me, she thought I said something rude about her. Then she told the girl, and then she kept the girl came up to me and was like, "What are you doing? Why are you making everyone upset?" And I was like, "She just misunderstanding me." And then and then I was. And then I was going to tell her um, to, um, to mind her own business, but then she stormed out. Then in class, I told her to mind her own business, and then she got really mad, and then she tried to be my friend. And what choice did you make in this, though, and which attitude did you have? I had a really mad for being mean to my friends, but also quite upset attitude. Um, and my choice was I'll make her the lowest friend of my life. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say your choice was to rise above it and and forgive her. No. No, not yet. You know what, guys? You can't always be you can't always be perfect, particularly when he, particularly things when they when they are involving friends. Let's share who's come up with a concept of some of the purposes they'd like to have in their life. Who would like to go first? Let's see whose hands up. Amelia Riley. Um, so I want by the end of the year, I want to sell fifty bracelets. So you're you so you're so even if you have a bad day, Amelia, and you don't sell any, you keep that purpose in mind that you're trying to sell fifty. Okay, and it will help you, give you motivation and meaning. Right, Faith. Um, I want to be able to play for my school football team next year. Because I managed to get into it next year, so I hope I can get into it next year in primary seven. Great. So Faith, Faith's got a bigger purpose of playing for her school football team next year. So if you have a bad day at training, Faith, you just keep up that big purpose in your mind, okay? Eva? I want to 20 of my bracelets. 
You're going to sell 20 of your bracelets. When by, Eva? Have you get, set yourself an ideal timeline? The end of the month. The end of the month. Okay, you're going to have to have a Christmas fair. Where are you sending them, Eva, at the moment? Around my street. Eva, you need to send us some photos and videos. How's it been going? Good, I've sold 50 of them already. You sold 50 of them? How much money have you made them? Only about 30 pounds. Okay, so maybe what price are you selling them at, Eva? One pound fifty. One pound fifty. Who do we think Eva should maybe put? Have you tried putting the prices up a bit? Yeah, but nobody's buying them. Okay, Eva, if you are you on TikTok? Are you following us on TikTok? Yeah. You DM me afterwards, okay, and show me some photos so we can take a quick look. Eva's purpose is to sell how many? Twenty or fifty? Twenty. 20 by the end of the year great she sold 50 already that's great okay everyone's hands is up bethany um so before that I passed grade two on. on which one piano bethany uh how old are you bethany oh 12 okay that's the perfect age to be doing grade two you can definitely pass it when's the exam um in March. In March. Okay, so you've got lots of time to practice, remembering that's the purpose that you're going for. Great answer. Stella. Mine is to do lots more dance competitions and to get even better at my dance and win like lots of different medals and stuff for it. Yeah, now guys, I know we can't see this on this Zoom, but Stella is an absolutely brilliant dancer. And I think that is a great purpose yeah. to have. I think you can definitely do that, Stella, and get in some shows. How about that? Yeah. On some big stages and do some performances. That would be great. Like some in January. Oh, that's great news, because she's a great dancer and it's really important to do things that you love and feel passionate about. Who else has got their hand up still? Mackie. I want to try and sell 20 bracelets, no, 50 bracelets before my birthday. When's your birthday, Mackie? March 29th. And you've already got yours on Vinted, haven't you? Yeah. And you're selling them, yeah? Yeah, I've sold eight. In how long? A week? You only put them up last week, didn't you? Yeah, a week. Mackie, I think you're going to crush that goal of 50 by March if you carry on like that. You've just got to be careful with Vinted because some people on TikTok have told us they sometimes delist the bracelet listings because they're not secondhand. So just make sure you keep backups of it in case you need to search it somewhere else. But great work, Mackie. And even if you have a bad day, you can then remember that your goal is 50 by March. Toby. My goal is to set up an online shop by New Year's Eve. And where are you going to set it up, Toby? Because we're going to do the same. I think I'm going to invest in a website. I think I'm going to use Wix. Are you? Toby, that's so sophisticated. Okay, so when you are having those days, Toby, if you start struggling with Wix, you just have to remember that. It's just a bad moment on that whole journey and choose your attitude, which I'm sure you'll do brilliantly because you always do. Okay, put your hands down if you've answered so I can see who's got their hand up still. Okay, Caden. So I have my own business and I sell some little knitty worms and um, loads of people really like them. So I want to try and sell another 50 before Christmas. Hey, did, what is it you're selling? So I sell uh, like handmade knitted worms. Handmade really knitted fluffy. worms? That, how amazing. We need to see some photos of those. Yeah, I'll send some later. Yeah, send some later. How many of them have you sold? So I think I've sold over 100 a hundred? Caden, that is so impressive. You need to send some pictures and we can help you promote it. Where do you sell them? Sometimes I go door to door and sometimes I set up little stands. Do, do, you, do your parents go with you if you go around like that? Yeah, sometimes they do. Sometimes they just wait in the car and just watch from a place. Oh, that's so cool. Well done, Caden. We would all love to see the handmade knitted ones. Do you knit them yourself? Yeah, so me and my mum make them together. Oh, that's so cool. Annie, what's your purpose? Have you written a purpose? And you said that Mila hasn't shared her answer since she wrote it down. Mila S, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? She's there. Mila S, we can't hear you. Try now. Let's see if there's any improvement in your audio. Straight by the end of December. 
Hang on, we got the bit by the end of December. What do you want to do by the end of September? December? By December. I want to do a front landing because I can do it, but I landed cross-legged. I'm landing straightly by the end of December. In what, gymnastics? Is that in gymnastics. In gymnastics, great goal. Are you doing lots of practice? And remember, yeah. so gymnastics is a thing where it can easily go well and go badly. So when you have a time it doesn't go badly, you make a choice that you're just going to keep practicing. Last two hands up, Mila G. My challenge, sorry, my goal challenge is to try and get through my grade three exam in singing. When's that, Mila? When's it? Uh, probably in yeah. January. In January. Brilliant, that's a good goal. And would you one day want to be a singer? I don't really want to be a singer when I'm older. I want to publish a couple of songs, but I mainly want to be a footballer. You've said so you've got some big purposes in your life then, publishing songs and being a footballer. Great vision, Mina. Well done. And lastly, Noah. I want to get into the Netball League. What's that you've drawn? Hold it up. Netball League. You want to get into the Netball League? Would you like to play Netball when you were grown up? I already played netball and I'm already in the league, but I still wouldn't get into it. So you want to keep playing netball? Brilliant. Okay, let's have a reminder of what we've learned today. So we have learned invaluable insights from three books, Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and Man's Search for Meaning. Remember, these books are teaching us about the power of our minds the importance of our relationships and the importance of having purpose. So having a big goal, because when times are difficult, that's what you need to help you stay motivated and keep on going. Let's see what's coming up next week. So next week is our final lesson of the term. We're going to be here with Stagecoach doing how to be confident. Who wants to learn about confidence or improve their confidence? So the guys from Stagecoach say we're going to be doing some interactive Less interactive exercises, which will be fun. I don't know what they're going to be. We'll have to see when we're here live next week. So start thinking about ahead of next week, what confidence means to you and how things would change if you were more confident. What would you feel if you were more confident? By the way, we've got someone on TikTok who's saying, who's sending a very important message to you guys saying, Life is snakes and ladders, so to speak. Always be confident and just enjoy yourselves. And some other people have been saying amazing goals you guys have as well, because they've been listening and have heard your goals.